Bow drill is often misconstrued as a last ditch technique, one used after all other methods had failed. But of the four types of ignition sources, it's actually one of the best due to the nature of the heat produced. Of the four types of ignition, you have flame, sparks, coals, and solar. Most everyone would choose flame, i.e. a big lighter is the best option, and it's definitely the most convenient. Flame works well assuming you have good dry tinder material, but it doesn't work well if you don't. You can hold a big lighter under damp tinder all day and it likely won't fire. Whereas a bow drill coal is a sustained slow heating ignition source. It can dry the tinder material out and concentrate the heat all in one spot for a very long time. It's not uncommon for a big bow drill coal to smolder for 15 to 30 minutes. Whereas your big lighter, it gets hot after holding it a few minutes. And bow drill coals are definitely more effective than ferro rod sparks, no question about that. Most people don't consider the nature of the heat produced when starting fires, and what separates friction fire from the other methods is the long, slow burning type heat that stays lit a really long time. And someone well practiced in constructing a bow drill kit can easily make one in less than 15 minutes. So it's a viable option under any conditions, really. I've got bow drill coals in blizzard conditions many times, as well as in the deepest, wettest jungles in the world. So it's definitely a technique worth mastering because you don't have to have any modern tools to recreate it. Meaning the worst case scenario you might find yourself in, it's a skill you can depend on, assuming you put the practice in. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bow drill action. We already got a fire and I just carved a kit from something we had laying around, but negative 10, negative 5, doing bow drill. That feels like a little bit of an accomplishment. That's just for fun. Now, I mean, if I was stuck in a real survival scenario, could I get bow drill fire in a pinch? Yeah, absolutely. It is definitely, at least for someone who practices it as much as I do, it's a foolproof technique no matter where I go. Okay, second take, second call, because my cameraman didn't push the record button. So we're going to give it another whirl. Now, I love a Bic lighter as much as anyone, but they have issues lighting in freezing conditions. Bic lighters str struggle to work in freezing temps because butane, the fuel used in these lighters, doesn't vaporize properly in cold conditions. When it's cold, the butane remains in a liquid state and doesn't turn into gas, which is necessary for ignition. So if you're going to depend on a Bic lighter, which you shouldn't, you have to make sure to keep it really warm, keep it on your body close to you during cold conditions. Give it a little air, got a little time. This is just some we had laying around camp. We've always got a lot of tender around. There you have it, fire on top of ice. Cold conditions, uh, you know, bow drill, it's not exactly a disadvantage in an environment like this. You know, when you have really super cold conditions, the advantage is that the 
Uh, the cold actually pulls all the moisture in the air and makes everything super dry. And so fire making in these cooler conditions can actually be easier than it would be in say the mid thirties when things are moist and temperatures have been fluctuating between maybe 20 in the night and 40 during the day. And so a lot of Northern environments, for instance, uh, it's much easier to make fire up there as well. The woods are more conducive to uh, getting fire from having birch and aspen and firs and all these different kinds of excellent making fire trees that are available. Um, and, you know, every environment you go to, that environment usually provides a solution for your survival.